Hello and welcome back to Fossil Frenzy, a series that focuses on a specific specimen or recent scientific discovery. While our last episode asked how accurate a certain movie monster was, our latest asked, are there dinosaur ghosts? All joking aside, today we talk about the Big Owl Mount at the University of Wyoming Geological Museum in Laramie, Wyoming. While known through the scientific community by the time of its discovery, Big Owl reached mainstream notoriety thanks to the BBC special Ballard of Big Owl, now known as Allosaurus, a walking with dinosaurs special. The special looked at a possible scenario to explain all the pathology seen in Owl's skeleton. Being that Owl is nearly 95% complete, the skeleton nearly told a story through injuries. Injuries are seen in 19 different spots. These include injuries to the right dorsal ribs, 3 through 6 and 14, cervical vertebra 6, dorsal vertebra 3, 8, 13, caudral vertebra 2, left ilium, chevron 2, right scapula, right manus phalanx 2, 1, castrelia left pes phalanx 2, 3, left metatarsal 3, right metatarsal 5, right pes 3, 1. The most noticeable of these injuries is in vulcrum on the right pes phalanx 3, 1 an injury that the team behind the BBC special contributed to Al's death. Looking at the study behind the pathology, it looks as if the injury was actually long-lived, possibly up to six months, showing the resilience dinosaurs had. Now, Al was originally discovered in 1991 near Shell, Wyoming, by a Swiss team led by Kirby Silber. The skeleton would later be excavated by a joint team of the Museum of the Rockies and University of Wyoming Geological Museum, hence why mounts are seen in both locations though BBC filmed at the University of Wyoming. The team was able to determine that Al was still a juvenile and not yet fully grown. Even though Al is not yet fully grown, Al is still about 8 meters or 26 feet long. Not yet the size of other Allosaurus specimens or the gargantuan Sorphaganax in Oklahoma City. Al is still far larger than any land carnivore today. Al was originally assigned to the species Allosaurus fragilis, but more recent studies in 2020 have assigned the specimen to Allosaurus gemanseni, an older species that appeared about 5 million years before Fragilis. The differences between Fragilis and gemanseni are rather noticeable, especially just even looking at the skull alone. These differences include the jugal being less slanted and orbital venestra as well as thin bilateral blade-like crests on the nasals that run from the nostrils to the orbital. These, among other autopomorphies, help distinguish the two, so thanks to both Big Al as well as the Battle at Big Rock, at which the Allosaurus is designed after Jimanseni, this new species is already skyrocketed into pop culture. So what might have Allosaurus looked like in the flesh? Well, thanks to this really awesome PNSO model, we can kind of get an educated guess on what one might look like in the flesh. Now this model is quite interesting too because it is said to have been modeled after Allosaurus gemanseni. Though there is some debate with people saying it's fragilis and others saying it's maybe just a mix of the two. If we look at the top of the head you can actually kind of see where that thin blade like crest runs along from the nasal to the orbital. But I just figured I would show you this kind of give you an idea of flesh on the bones. Let's get back and we'll look at some more of the skeleton of Big Al.
right, so thank you for joining us on another Fossil Frenzy episode. If you want to see more of this or have a specific specimen in mind, let us know in the comments below. Now, if you want to see more of what we do here at Cools Paranormal, click your link to the right. If you want to see more Fossil Frenzies, click the link to your left. And don't forget to hit that like and give us a subscribe.